Hey everyone, today we are in the kitchen cooking a fully plant-based pizza recipe. For today's recipe, you're going to need these ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the crust. The main ingredient for the crust is red lentils, dried red lentils. We need to soak them in order to make the crust. So I've measured one cup of lentils. I've already actually set aside another cup that I've filled with water, so you just top the rest with water. Let it soak for at least an hour. You can let it soak to up to 24 hours if you want to, but just I usually do it right before I'm cooking. I'm gonna set that aside, let it soak, and get to work on my sauce. I usually use a full container of cherry tomatoes and just go ahead and put that in a pan ready for the oven. The second ingredient is garlic. I usually use about half the amount of garlic ratio to the amount of tomatoes that I use. You can use more, less, depending on what your preference is. This just needs to be coarsely chopped. Um, we're gonna end up blending it all together anyway, so it doesn't really matter how small or big your garlic is. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this. Okay, once you have it chopped, you're gonna throw that in with the tomatoes. And then I'm going to top it off with just a little bit of olive oil to keep things moist. And then just a little bit of salt and pepper. I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees. That's the temperature we're gonna keep it up for the whole recipe. I usually leave it in close, closer to an hour just because I like things more roasted. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the oven while I let the lentils soak. Okay, so I've chopped all my ingredients and I've let my lentils soak for about an hour. So now I'm gonna get to work on the batter for the crust. Um, you take the, the soaked lentils and put them in a food processor, Magic Bullet, Vitamix, whatever you want. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump these in here. I've drained the water out of here. Um, but I, once I get all of these lentils in here, I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. But you want fresh water, not your uh, soaked lentil water. So. And it's a little bit messy, but that's okay. I'm just grab a little bit of water, dump that in with these lentils. I have this on the puree setting. You don't want it to be like mu too mushy, but you want it to be like a cake batter consistency. So when you're finished uh, mixing up your uh, lentil mixture, you just wanna make sure that it's like all the, the full pieces of lentil are broken up and it's kind of like mushy, mushy mush. And dump that into a bowl and we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients into it. So there's only a couple more ingredients we're gonna throw into this. Um, we're gonna do a half a tablespoon of baking powder. A half a tablespoon of dried basil. A half a tablespoon of dried oregano. and a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this up. Okay, once you have all those ingredients mixed together, we're just gonna set that aside for a second because now we're gonna take our pizza pan and um, just spray it with a little bit of non-stick spray. And I have a 12-inch uh, round pizza dish here. You can also do this on a, on a rectangle cookie sheet. Um, whatever you have around is fine. Um, this amount of batter will do a 12-inch round pizza, but it'll also do like a 12 by nine uh, rectangle. And you can also do this super thin, you can do it super thick, depending on what you like for your pizza crust. 
I have a little bit of crust left or crust batter left, so I'm just gonna set that aside. And you can see when you look at the crust, there's still a few pieces of lentils, but overall it's, it's kind of a batter consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the oven, 400 degrees with those garlic and tomatoes, and leave it in there for about 20 minutes until this top starts to brown and get a little crispy. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and check on our crust and most likely take it out. Yeah, it looks about, it should be, when you, take, when you take a look at it, it should be starting to brown, but not fully. You want it a little bit crispy on top. We're gonna work on the sauce now. So, the tomatoes and garlic have been sitting out for just a little bit. I don't want them to get too cool, but I just don't want them to be steaming hot right out of the oven. I've cleaned the food processor after I um, pureed the lentils for the crust. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the tomatoes and, well, not throw them, but put them into the food processor. We're gonna mix them up and create the sauce for the pizza. Now mixing this, we're just gonna wanna uh, make it to a regular tomato sauce consistency. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this off, remove the blade, and then we're just gonna spread this onto the pizza like regular pizza sauce. And if you don't puree it, puree it so all the garlic and everything is completely mashed up, it's not a big deal. It's still gonna get the flavor and taste delicious. So I'm just spreading out the sauce. Trying to get an even layer everywhere. Okay, so now that we have the sauce spread on the pizza, I'm gonna go ahead and put my toppings on. For today, we're doing mushrooms and black olives and peppers and onions, and I'm gonna do half with jalapenos for a little extra spice. And you'll notice, because this is a plant-based pizza, sometimes um, vegan recipes will include like a cashew cheese or something. Um, this recipe has so much flavor, it really doesn't need any cheese. Uh, when, you, when you taste it, you're not even gonna miss it at all. Okay. So now that I have all the toppings on the pizza, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it back in the oven. I've left it on still at 400 degrees. I'm gonna throw it back in for 10 to 12 minutes like you would any sort of oven pizza just until those vegetables are roasted and start to kind of melt into the pizza. All right, the vegetables have settled and things are looking good. So I'm gonna let this cool just a tiny bit, slice it, and then it's time to eat. If you want to see more delicious, simple plant-based recipes like this, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.